am a terrible dog dad. I know. You're thinking, you, dog man, a terrible dog dad? Well, maybe not terrible. But let me tell you something. Sometimes them dogs do things we just don't have any control over. You can't you can't pad the whole area in which they live. You're probably wondering what am I talking about? Well, here's an incident that happened yesterday that I was pretty terrified over, but it turned out to be okay. So we had, I went out to mow yesterday, and I'm always, you know, conscious of where the dogs are so that I point my mower in the right direction so it doesn't shoot something out 100 miles an hour and hit the dog. Lily, for some reason, feels she's got to, if I point the shoot this way, that's where she runs. She's got to run over that way, and then I got to scream at her, get it. Why don't you just go in? Go in the house. She won't do it. She's got to stay out there. And then Waldo's got to come out. Something about me mowing the grass is very good entertainment to them. They got to come out. And he's got to come out. Well, I, I deal with that every time I mow their yard. And no, nobody got hurt there. Because, I, you know, if they get too close, I just turn off the, the, mo the blade and... Wait till they move around. Uh, Waldo, he don't come out so much anymore, but Lily does. She likes to sit out there in the sun. Don't ask me why. We'll get a drink of this right here. That's good. That's good stuff. So later, you know, and while I'm mowing, it's starting to rain. It's just, you know, that kind of rain where you're going to keep mowing. It's not really hurting anything. And it did it for about 15 minutes. I mean, my shirt barely got wet. And so when I'm done mowing, actually, I didn't, I didn't finish mowing. I went over a big, thick clump of grass that was pretty wet. And it blew the belt off. Didn't break it. It's just I know what happened. There's a, a spring that operates the clutch. And I got to lay down there and fix the spring. And I was so almost, I mean, I only had about 10 feet to go. I said, to hell with it. You ever done that? To hell with it. Because it takes two hours to mow this property. And by then, I'm a basket, you know, a basket case. When I stand up, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. They can get me one of them fangled zero turns is what I need. Maybe I'll go check them out. I don't know. So I just parked it. And there's Millie. She likes, she's pretty much full time in the dog port. I mean, carport. She lays under there. But I couldn't find Tilly. And that's not like Tilly. Wherever there's Millie, there's usually a Tilly. No nope, Tilly. And they don't get in their barrels in the summer. Okay, they like to lay out in the open at night, and lay out in the open. And, uh, you know, I don't blame them. It's, not, it's been beautiful this week. For the last couple weeks. It's been a nice summer. Well, I don't find Tilly. So I go look in the barrels. And sure enough, there she is. And I'm thinking, well, it, it was raining. So she probably went in there. But why didn't she go in the dog port with Millie? And she was kind of shaking. I'm like, maybe something hit her with the mower. I don't know what hit her. Ah. Uh, I couldn't figure out, and she would not come out of there. She would not come out. I looked. Otherwise, there was no marks on her. She was fine, but something scared her. She would not come out of that barrel. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I got 30-gallon barrels that I cut holes in, and they're plastic, and dogs love them, and they're very warm. Uh, they're, they're comfortable for the dog. They love them. You could build a fancy dog house, put it there, and put the barrel there. They're going to get in the barrel because they like them. But she wouldn't come out. And I said, well, I'll let her be. Whatever it is, you know, she'll get over it. And she's not the type to get scared like Millie. Millie, everything scares her. She's had a rough first few years of her life. First six years. 
until I got her. Now she's come around and she gets excited to see me when I come out and jumps all over me. I would have never seen that two years ago, her doing that. So later I'm getting everybody fresh water. They get they get fresh water once a day. I'll, they've got big two to five gallon buckets. Uh, my thinking is if I croak, they're at least going to have two to three days worth of water. So I fill them up every day, dump them. You know, if they get any debris, I dump them. So I'm getting them water, and I happen to notice my extension cord that I had wrapped up in the corner was drug out. And right away I knew what happened, and I had forgotten to unplug it from the wall, which I usually never do, but I'm not perfect. Sometimes we forget, but they don't ever bother it. Yep. Looked at the cord, it had been chewed on, down to the wire, bare wire, and she got a big old sting out of it. So I bet she never chews on a cord again. Now, you know, 110 ain't gonna, you know, she, she was fine. It just probably, it gave her the biggest shock of her life, and it probably took her a while to come down from that. I know I've been bit many times wire in this house. So it couldn't have been fun for her. Uh, I know when these, I mean, four of the dogs are gone now, but when all my dogs were, were very young, uh, I was living in a different place and put up an electric fence to keep them in, keep other dogs out. Because that's a thing around here. It ain't just keeping your dogs in, it's keeping the other ones out. And so we put up, uh, I was staying with a friend until I found this place and... We put a line around the bottom and to keep them from digging out, and we put one around the top. Well, once they were bit once with that, which, you know, it's, it, it hurts them, but it ain't going to kill them. Uh, they won't ever come near that fence again. So when I bought this place, I put up the yard. They were still all fairly young. I put up an electric fence, got everything set up, but I never plugged it in. And they knew not, to, and still to this day, they will not touch the fence. They will not, they will not go near it. So that is the best way to train a dog, even though it sounds, some people may say, oh, that's cruel, shocking the dog. It isn't. Because you're saving that dog's life by digging out. He might run into the road. So she got a taste of the old electricity yesterday. I felt bad. Uh, the cord's ruined. Uh, it's coming on her allowance. Coming out of her allowance, and I gotta go buy a new cord. I got another one somewhere. Uh, it's in that shed. You guys know about that shed. So, I highly doubt she's gonna chew it, but then I noticed that I've got a saw out there, a very expensive DeWalt saw, uh, and the cord was hanging down. I have a tarp over it. Cord was hanging down. And it looks like one of them attempted to chew on that. Because the little prongs were all bent and gave up, probably because they couldn't pull it down. So I gotta be a little more careful about what I leave around because they'll get into it. And another thing, another issue I'm having with Tilly, and it's not Millie, it's only Tilly. Whenever I fire up my Blackstone grill, she's gotta be in it. She's gotta be right there. She sees me put the meat or whatever I'm putting on there on. And she wants, she wants it. And there's little drip pans that go in the back. Here goes my nose again. Man, it's a mustache fur that's, you know, curled up and it's tickling my nose. But there's little drip pans that go on the back and it has a little foil insert and catches all the drippings. The greasage, the drippings, whatever. You scrape it off in there on the griddle and it goes in there. Well, she started pulling those out and then licking up all the nasty grease. And I know she did it. Because I took the grease after I found she was doing that. And I took the grease and I poured it on an old tree stump. And the next day, and there was a bunch of pieces of bark and stuff I had sat up there. Because I'm going to burn it some more. And I'm going to look in the camera and she's over there licking on that tree stump. And then she won't eat for that day because she's got a stomach ache. Because she just swallowed a bunch of grease. So now I can't do that no more. I just took the grease pans off. But... 
if I put on a steak or I put something on the grill and then I come in, I'll look on the cameras there. And there she is, moseying up to the grill. And I seen her jump on it the other day. And she didn't jump on the side that was hot. Had she done that, it would probably have been the last time she messed with it. So now i got to relocate the grill. I got it under the carport so it stays out of the weather. So now i got to buy a cover for it, move it to the front porch, so Tilly don't mess with the grill. So you see, having dogs, they get into stuff, man. They're like little kids. They're nosy. And anything to do with food, once she, once she put it together that... That machine makes food. And I want some of that food. She's never going to stop doing it. So if I want to keep the grill in good shape or keep her safe, i got to move it on the front porch now. And then it's going to be out in the weather. Tilly. I have Tilly Weeks. I have Millie Weeks. I've got Waldo Weeks. Rooster Weeks. And Lily Weeks. They all pick a week. Or two. Or they could pick up to a month. Waldo has went through his little spiels where he goes on for a month. Whatever he's doing. But he's he's getting older and he doesn't hardly come out of the dog apartment. He only comes out really to go to the bathroom and that's it. He's getting older. Uh, I may not have him. I'm hoping in uh, you know, several more years. But he is 13. And he is a beagle. So they don't, they don't generally live too long, 15 maybe. And Lily, uh, she's getting older too. She's, I got her in 2014, so she's 10. She's overweight. I don't understand how because I feed them all the same amount of food. Um, she, just, she just started putting on weight, part of getting older. I know I, gotta, I have very few options here. Uh, when I feed them, I mix in canned food with their dry food. Um, they won't eat vegetables. They won't eat anything that's good for them. <laughs> but they don't get, they get two cups, two cups of dry mixed in with their meat and all that. But she doesn't exercise very well. Uh, she hard, She goes out and barks at stuff that isn't there. And usually, you know, she's laying around most of the time. But humans are the same way. We're all overweight. Food's terrible. And they don't put labels on canned dog food. So you don't really know what's in it. And a lot of people are going to comment, Oh, you got to buy this and that. I'll bet you there's no label on it telling you what's in it. And, uh, and they could tell you anything. Because there's no regulations on dog food. They could tell you anything that's in it. And it could be a complete lie. So... But i got to buy what's available to me here. Otherwise, you know, what do i got to do? Go to Little Rock to the you know, specialty food dog store? I would if I could. Oh, good thing dogs don't drink coffee. So, ooh, my microphone's about to fall off here. Let me twist it up. We don't want that falling off. Got a little clamp. That you, there we go. It ain't going nowhere now. Woo. All right. Well, it is very late. I got to get out to the shop and start working. I, I never got out there yesterday because I had to mow. And eventually, I got to get lay down on the ground and, and put that spring back on. It's very easy. But the way you got to lay, and you got to just guess where the hole is and, and do this. And eventually you get lucky and it goes down into the hole. It's just a spring with two hooks on the end. The one's already in. But it just wadded up that blade so much and it knocked the belt off. Uh, I, I don't have patience for mowers anymore. I, when I first bought the place, I was working at the pawn shop. So I had access to buy cheap used ones. And used ones are not the way to go. You're constantly fixing them. I got fed up with that, bought a brand new one. That was about, when was that, 18, so six years ago. I tried to take care of it. I just put new belts on it, new some new parts. Uh, I tried to keep the oil changed. I changed it about every two years yeah, because it stay, It looks good most of the time. 
Um, lawnmower mo engines are pretty low maintenance most of the time. Keep the oil changed, you know, run the right gas. Don't run that um, ethanol stuff in there. And you should be fine. And what I do is I'll pull the battery out of it after the last mow of the season. I'll pull the battery out and I'll fully charge it with the charger because they don't recharge. Okay, what you're running on all summer is whatever's in the battery because there's a, no alternator on, on them smaller mowers. And I charge it up. Usually it's at 60, 70 percent. And I charge it up and I keep it indoors all winter. And I'll get three to five years out of a battery, which is good because a lot of people replace them almost every year because they don't take care of them. When you leave them out in the cold like that, especially when they're not fully charged, they'll die on you. And then you got to go buy a new one, which if anybody's bought a battery in the last several years, they are extremely expensive now. A car battery, very expensive. They're not $60, $70 anymore. They're more close to around 300 depending on what you have. The one I bought for that truck was $300. So none of that's cheap anymore. It's never going to go down. Anything that goes up these days never comes back down. It doesn't. That's corporate greed. Thanks for watching. Happy trail.